Peace and blessings from God, our Father, His Son, Jesus, and to the saints of God collected here at the historic Zion Benevolent Baptist Church on this beautiful first Sunday morning. We thank you for being along with us on this Sunday morning broadcast. It's the first Sunday in November, which means that in just two days, we're going to be on the precipice of either coronating a new leader as president or continuing with the continuous administration. And what I want to encourage each of you to do, I'll never tell you who to vote for, but if you haven't voted already, I encourage you to do so and to do it now. If you need help, we've talked with the ministries of this church. If you need a ride to the polls, we'll be glad to provide that for you. Just reach out to one of our deacons or our trustees and we'll coordinate that with you. God has blessed us with a van to be able to do it. And we want you to make sure that your right to vote is exercised. It is one of the most sacred of civic franchises that every citizen should employ. Please, if you haven't done so already, go vote. It's also Communion Sunday. And after we talk for just a moment, we're going to break bread together. But I'm glad to have with us our Minister of Music, the one and only Brother James Garner. He's going to share some remarks with you. First of all, I just want to say thank you to the Zion Benevolent Baptist Church uh, for supporting us on our choir's 77th anniversary, which we had here on the front of the church, which was a little different, but it was received very well by everyone. And we want to say thank you for just tuning in, watching us, celebrating with us, because um, this is your choir, and we want to thank each and every one of you for joining in with us. It was an awesome experience, first time done in this manner, and we want to thank everyone that participated in it, and uh, we want to say thank you, Pastor, for coming out and, and celebrating with us and um, in closing it out in a great fashion. And we thank you for what you did and showing. And um, we want to just thank everyone that was um, involved in it, from our video personnel all the way down to our musicians and to this awesome choir that you have here at the Zion Benevolent Baptist Church. We are trying to mobilize our efforts up for return. We're going to be talking about our anniversary plans very soon, you want to know how that is. I heard your cry about possibly doing an outdoor or a partial open service. We're kicking around that idea, and I hope to have an answer for you one week from today. Please stay tuned. Got a word from the Lord on this morning that we're going to share coming from the book of James chapter 5. It's called, I Got You. Stay tuned. The word is next.
within me bless his holy name. It is a blessing to be back in the house of the Lord just one more time to be a witness in this Sunday morning service on this first Sunday in November. Somebody ought to tell the Lord thank you. Hallelujah to the Lamb. If you've got anything to rejoice about, now's the time. If you've got anything to be grateful for, now's the time that you tell God, thank you. You have been called to worship. Good morning, church family. It is so good to be with you again this morning. We have two special thank you cards and a reminder announcement. First, a thank you card that says, to Pastor Capers and the Diamond of the Church family, you truly live out the meaning of your name. Words cannot express how thankful we are for the kindness you extended toward us. We pray that God will overwhelm you with his best blessings because of your thoughtfulness. This is from Pastor Robert Benton, First Lady Benton and their children. The next card reads, to Pastor Capers and his Diamond Edward Scholarship Ministry. Words do not express how much we appreciate your kind support. Thank you for all that you do. You're simply the best. This is from one of our students, Serena Wilson of Columbia College and Jalen Conyers of USC Upstate. We are in the midst of planning our 150th church anniversary celebration during the month of November 2020. Despite what COVID-19 has done, we are celebrating what God has done for us individually and as a church body. Details will be forthcoming. Traditionally, we give $1 for every year of our church anniversary. You may begin to give your $150 today. You may ask one of our church officers for the blue It's Anniversary Time envelope when you come by the church to give your tithes and offerings and you are ready to give your contribution for our 150th church anniversary. To give electronically, you may give using the Giveify app, select church anniversary, or use the cash app and place church anniversary in the notes section. Thank you and may God continue to bless you.
fills my cup with every blessing meet. I thank you for the desert road, for the bitter and the sweet. I thank you for the mountain top and for the riverside, for all your goodness that you have bestowed and all your grace denied. Father, we come thanking you for the manifold blessings, God, that you so richly given to us by allowing us to see the dawning of yet another day, God, and we, we pause for a moment to tell you thank you. Father, we thank you that as we come, Lord, on the precipice of the conclusion of this year, that your mercies have kept us from one good measure to the next, God, we would not be here without you. To that we say thank you. We could not rely on our own power or on our own strength of our own devices, but we had to trust wholly in your perfect will. And Father, for how you kept us, we say thank you. And while we might feel not distant from your presence, we are always proximate through the power that is found in your word. And the word testifies of itself where it declares how can he preach except he be sent, Lord, and how can they hear without a preacher, God? And Father, we ask, dear Master, for this your sin servant, that you would sanctify me in your presence, hide me behind your bloodstained cross, so that in this hour they would see none of me but receive all of you. And when the moment has expired and I retire for the occasion that you would take all the honor, you take all the glory, and you take all the praise because you alone are worthy. And we ask these things in the name of the risen Savior, who is Jesus Christ, our Lord. In Jesus' precious name we pray and all God's children said amen, amen, and amen. We give honor to the presence of the Lord on this morning who for reasons of his own I don't know why he chose me, but I thank God that he did. Uh, chose me to serve my generation according to his perfect will, to his son Jesus. We are indebted for delivering from a sinful life and a shameful life and to the comforter, our keeper, our sustainer, and our guide. To my sisters in the ministry of Bond, in their absence, to our ministry of deacons, Deacon Thompson is here on tonight. I thank God for him, to our clerk, Brother Brown, to Brother Ashley Fox, and this is the Shay and Sister Jewel on our AV team on tonight. To our music ministry, to our musical choir that is here on this morning under the direction of the comparable and the capable uh, James Garner. To the baddest man in the land, to my brothers from other mothers, Joshua and Jameson, and to all of my father's children that make Zion Benevolent the best church on this side of heaven. We say God bless you. And may heaven forever smile upon you. This is the last Sunday before election day. Don't let me find out that you have not voted. You got 48 hours to get it together. Go cast your vote before I come find you. I've got a directory with everybody's addresses on it. I will roll up at your house and take you to the polls if need be. Go vote. It is your sacred franchise. I'll never tell you who to vote for, but I need you to exercise your right to do so in this democratic society. God bless you is my prayer. There is a word from the Lord on this morning, and it is one that the Lord has been dealing with me about, and I'm going to share it with you on this morning. For those of you that have your Bibles, I invite you to join me in the book of James. Chapter number five. I got my wedding ring on this morning and I got my wallet. So I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I almost high made it last, night, uh, last week, but it was grace and mercy that got me home safely. And I got a full tank of gas tonight. James chapter five. The book of James is nestled between uh, the New Testament books of Hebrews and first Peter, if I'm not mistaken. And once you find James chapter five, I want you to notice the 16th verse in the sermonic text. And quiet, if you have it, I want you to say amen for me to help me out. Amen. James chapter 5, very familiar passage of scripture. Verse number 16 reads on this wise from the rustic language of the King James Version. It says, confess your faults one to another. Peep this and pray for one another. Pay attention here. It says, confess your faults one to another and then do what pray for one another why that he may be healed james says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much are there any righteous people in the house this morning i want you to turn your neighbor left or right and tell them these three words tell them i got 
got you. I, I got you. I got you. I got you. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Uh, the times have have changed. I was reminiscing in a conversation that I had about our attitudes about uh, worship and how we're in this hybrid model, this distance learning, distance worship, rather, if you will. And it seems that there are some disconnections. I talked about it on last Sunday, but I've been praying. I am on the precipice of starting a fast. I'd like for it to be corporate at some point, but I think that we need to be fasting and praying for the presence of the Lord as we consider the next stages that we have in development. But going back to my early point, churches have changed. There used to be a time where at its design, at its conceptual design, churches were designed to be hospitals. Hurt people could come to find the presence of the Lord and find healing through the collection of saints. It seems that people that had life issues, I remember the times when families would be going through problems in their life. They would come to the church and the church would come together. The baby need clothes, the church got you. We got some children that are younger. Let's give you what you need. You need grocery in your house. The missionaries, the mothers would go. Cook food, bring it to the house. Go buy grocery. Your yard need to be cut and you can't do it. We thank God for the brothers to go out free of charge with no strings attached to be able to minister to you. But it, it seems that times Deacon Thompson have kind of changed where the church has gone from being a hospital, a place for recovery to being a judgment hall where everybody wants to put your life under a magnifying glass to find the flaws, to find the faults, and to condemn you in a way that God himself doesn't even want to do. They want to exegete every part of your life and measure it to a standard of a gospel that they ain't even living to, to hold you under subjection as it seems. And it seems disingenuous and it seems to be counter to what the church is designed to be. They'll say, we can't open the churches now because of coronavirus, but the clubs are open right now. People ain't just going to the club catching COVID, they're catching chlamydia too, but ain't nobody talking about that. You might want to edit that out a little bit later. But it, it seems the fact that the attitudes about the sanctuary are being relaxed because the standard for godliness has changed. People don't hold anybody accountable anymore. And it's to that end that we got to learn how to talk to each other. Turn to somebody and tell them, just talk to me. Uh, there was a time it seemed that when people would see you erring in your ways and loved you enough to say, hey, you not want to tighten up in this area before things get too bad. And there was no malice, there was no contention, but that it was received in godly love because love was at the root of it. And when love is at the root of it, confessing your problem, laying aside those weights that easily beset you so that you can run with patience, the, rest that, the race that is set before you becomes easier. But when there is burden compounded on burden and you don't know who you can trust because you don't want to cast your pearl to the swine nor give what's holy to the dogs, you find yourself not having anybody to talk to. And in that time, you got to go back to the scripture and ask God to give me somebody that I can talk to. And I thank God for the David and Jonathan type of relationship, the Paul and Silas, the Paul and Barnabas, the Moses and Aaron type uh, dichotomy in ministry where there were people that held each other accountable so that you can confess your faults to. And here's where I lose some of the high-minded, sanctified, and sanctimonious folks and say, country preacher, how dare you tell me that I got problems in my life. I got everything together. I got money in my bank account. I've got a nice car in in the driveway. All of my children are together and I've got no issues in my life. And I tell that person you got at least one issue in your life is that you think more highly of yourself than you are because my Bible tells me that all of us have sinned and at least at one point fallen short. And it's at that end that we have to realize that even though we might be walking in righteousness, that all of us have still room to grow. Yeah, I might not cuss no more, but I ain't forgot the vocabulary. I still think it from time the time. I might not tip out and go down to the liquor store, but I ain't forgot what gin or, or anything tasted like. I understand that I remember what God has delivered me from, but I also need the Spirit of God and saints around me to keep me. I need to be kept. I need 
to be held accountable. So I need somebody that I can confess my issues to with no malice. Some of y'all don't know how therapeutic it is to go to somebody in love, irrespective of what time, day or night it is, and say, if you have a moment, I got a burden that I need to get off of me, and I don't trust my words in just anybody's ears, I need you to pray right along with me to make sure that deliverance comes to my house, not tomorrow, not the day after tomorrow, but I need to get a word through the Lord right now. Are you willing to fast with me to make sure that I'm not dealing with this issue this time next year? Grab somebody by the hand, don't grab nobody by the hand. And turn to them and tell them, I need to talk to you for a moment. And when you understand that when you're confessing your fault, there is a freedom that comes along with it. Some of y'all don't know what it feels like to carry a burden that you need to get off your chest. And sometimes the altar has its place of therapy, but sometimes you need an actual ear that you can unload that to. And I don't know about any of you, but it seems as like a weight begins to get released off of you when you know that deliverance can come from your confession. Uh, it's in the end that people don't want to talk about confession anymore. It's because they don't actually want to acknowledge what it is that they're going through. And the worst lie that any saint can tell is the one that they tell themselves. And the truth of the matter is that we oftentimes paint over our issues. We often gloss over our circumstances until we get to a point where we can't carry it anymore and we begin to break down. When hair begins to start falling out, weight begins to start shedding, depression starts creeping in, and then you think, I wish I had somebody to talk to, when the truth is you already have somebody to talk to. I thank God for the church mothers that have been through life, for those church fathers that have walked away and tells you, uh, brother, go ahead and slow your roll just a little bit. I've been exactly where you are right now. Let's sit down and grab a cup of coffee. Let's talk about it. I want that kind of church. I want the kind of experience where they'll see a young mother and that has a young child and doesn't condemn them, but say, let me tell you about how I got through what you're going through right now. You see that young brother that might be running the streets just a little bit too much. And instead of calling the cops on him, you tell him in the quiet, private moment, let me tell you where, what you're doing is winding up to be, and then you can see what godly growth looks like, but you can't do that just any kind of way. The Bible says not only should you confess your faults, it also says that you've got to pray for somebody else. And it's there that I begin to realize that I don't pray as much as I need to. Because my Bible tells me Brown. And the Bible says that man ought to always pray. Repeat this, and not faint means don't ever get tired of praying. The Bible tells me that we should pray without ceasing, which means that we should not stop praying. And furthermore, as a brother or a sister in the Lord, I can't expect people to pray for me, and in return, I will not pray for them. That's short-sighted as a Christian. It is it is obtuse. It is a place where you find yourself only looking out for you. But I want you to know that there's power in prayer. It's there in the scripture that we are reminded of an antiquated notion in the book of Acts. Or what we call down in Allerton, Sister Kissy, a prayer meeting. <laughs> the Bible says that Peter was locked up in jail, but the saints of God were praying over Peter. The Bible says that while they were praying, God allowed the doors of the jail to be opened and the man that was once a prisoner was made free. The Bible says that while they were praying, Peter walked out of the jail cell and went to a house where the prayer meeting was going on while it was met by a little girl by the name of Rhoda. <laughs> the Bible says that Peter introduced himself to Rhoda and he said, I need you to tell the people on the inside that I'm on the outside. And they said, no, it can't be him. It's got to be a spirit. And she left Peter knocking at the door. Y'all can't tell me that prayer won't make miracles happen in the mundane, that he can't turn your tragedy into a testimony and your peril into a praise when the saints get on one accord and learn how to pray for one another. It's a powerful thing to be able to have all your ducks in a row, but ain't it a greater blessing to say in the same way that God brought me out of this trial, I'm going to lift my voice to heaven on your behalf so that the God I know 
show as a deliverer can show himself strong in your life in the same manner. Ain't it a powerful thing to be able to reach across phone lines to say, I don't know what's going on in your life, but the Lord dropped you into my spirit. Do you have just a moment? Can we pray together? I don't know what's going on in your life, but I want you to know that God has not sent me with a word, but all he did was send me with a connection to let me know that whatever it is that you're going through, God is going to work it out. Tell somebody, I got you. And there that I begin to get encouraged by the final part of it. He says that you do so, so that healing can be brought about. And we're looking for a systematic approach for God to bring us out out of these things. Healing doesn't come by anything miraculous. It comes by the simple premise of throwing your arm around somebody, lifting your ear to them, and saying, we're going to get through this thing together. It is there that we realize that for 150 years, Zion Benevolent didn't get to be standing on the back of individuals. We stood on a collective effort to say, we're going through this thing together. Is that in the final clause of verse number 16, where James says that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man, it avails much. In other words, it means that results come when you do it the God kind of way. If you want to see miracles happen in your life, you get some righteous folks around you. Some folks that don't care about how people think about them or receive them, but are willing to get into the presence of God and pass all of the naysayers to shout right through their problems and to lift their hands through their difficulties and say, I'm not going to stand by and just get my miracle. I want my brother and sister in the Lord to see deliverance knock on their door as well. I feel like preaching in here. Tell somebody I got you. The reason I can say that I got somebody is because the Lord worked all the works in my life and because I've been saved long enough to realize that the God that I serve doesn't discriminate and furthermore, I'm not a stingy individual. I want to share the blessing and the recipe that God has given to me to share with you. If you want to see miracles happen in your life, it's a powerful thing to know God for yourself. But it's a greater blessing to know somebody else that knows God. And you can have a collection of saints at Ecclesia, a church, to get together and to shake the very foundations of hell and say, you can't have my child. You can't have my community. You can't have my church. You can't have this body because I got my brother and sister. Cancer, you can't have a way in this place. I'm standing and praying together. Domestic violence can't have a way in this house because I got my sister. Poverty will have no place because we're standing on a God that provides all of my needs according to his riches and glory. Tell somebody I got you. Because it taught me what community and communion really is. Because we've been isolated, Jewel, for so long. We've become individuals that we have forgotten what unity looks like. We've been sectioned off in our hubs. It has been easy for the enemy to divide us. This week, I want you to call somebody. And say, can we pray together? You don't have to know what's going on. A simple prayer. You ain't got to pray for 30 minutes like the things yes, you used to do. I ain't, I ain't against that. If you need to pray, I'm going to do so. But sometimes it just takes a short phone call. Yeah. And say, you got a second to pray. Get on the phone and pray. We do it at work all the time. Before we start meetings, we buy our hands and talk to God. I said, Lord, I need you to be in this meeting. We don't know what's going to come out of it, but we need your presence in Students walk up and say, Trey, the Lord dropped you in my spirit. Can we pray together? My answer is always yes. The simple precepts of prayer change much. The Bible says that the effectual fervor, that means that insisting, that abiding, that persistent, that that kind of prayer is the agent of change. And this morning, for anybody that might be watching, however you might be watching and you you need that to happen in your life. I want you to know that we here at Zion Benevolent, we got you. We're not perfect. We're far from it. But we do serve a perfect Savior. And if you need salvation, this time can be yours. For it is simple. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, the Bible says that you will be saved. If you need salvation, we want you to let us know. It's been a while. I ain't baptized nobody in about two months. 
And the pool is always ready. The chlorine stinked my eyes the last time we did it. But God is faithful. If you need Jesus, I want you to, I want you to let us know. We don't want you to wait. We want to do it right now. If you need prayer, let somebody know what's going on in your life because prayer will change things. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your power. We thank you for all things, God, that pertain to life and godliness. And we ask, Heavenly Master, that you will be with us, that you'll stand by us, that you'll encourage and uplift your people in the hour in which they need you the most. Lord, we love you and we bless your name. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. If this ministry has blessed you and you feel compelled to give, or if you're a regular member and want to give your tithe and offering, I want to remind you, Zion Benevolent, it is our tradition that each year during anniversary time that we give a dollar for each year that we've been in existence for years, 150 years. Feel no pressure to do it. You're not obligated to do it. It is a suggestion. It will be greatly received. But if you're unable to do it, the Lord will only allow you to give $50 because your income has changed. That's fine. You give whatever the Lord has purpose upon your heart. You can send your offer to P.O. Box 145, Gadsden, South Carolina, 29052. You can give on the Givelify app or on Cash App. I started using Cash App because it's easy. You just press one button and the money goes right where you need it to and the Lord increases. Or you can come by our sanctuary, which I encourage you to do. Receive communion. We're out front right now until 1230. Come receive communion and fellowship one with another. We hope to see you. I mean, actually see you as if you come in here to be a part of our anniversary celebration. In three weeks, we're still planning that God is going to do great things. Until then, you be blessed and walk in the will of God. Awesome. So, I need you to do me a favor right quick. Go grab your bread and your Welch's grape juice. If you've got manage it's at the house, grab that too. The Bible says on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, he blessed it, and he said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. The Bible says after the same manner, he took the cup and he poured it. He said, this is the New Testament in my blood. He said, I want you to drink all of it. And I'm having the same issue that we typically have on Sunday mornings. I can't get my pack open, but I got it. The Bible says that when he blessed it and break it, he served it and they did eat. Let's eat the bread together. If you have your cup, let's drink the cup together. Probably should have one for you. Jesus said, as often as you do this, you do so in remembrance of me. If you need communion, let us know. Our officers are mobile. We'll come and stand on your porch or off the porch and serve you if you need to be served.